Back live, two hotheads where activism happens. On the phone, we're about to introduce our, our guest today. Calling in, uh, we have the Director of Public Policy and the UN Representative with the Center of Inquiry, Michael Dodora. And we're going to discuss with him uh, Indonesian jailed atheist Alexander A'an. If I hope, hopefully I said that last name. It's a tough one. It's A-A-N. There's a video posted on our Facebook group about uh, the situation in Indonesia. Michael, are you on the phone with us? Indeed I am. Thank you for having me. Thanks for uh, coming on and uh, spending some time with us on a Saturday. What, uh, what's going on here in, in Indonesia? What, what happened with Alexander and why is he in jail? Uh, so, yes, Alexander Aan is, uh, or was, rather, a civil servant, 30-year-old 30 30 year guy um, in Indonesia who had posted on Facebook a couple times uh, that he was doubting uh, the existence of God. Uh, he had started a, a atheist group on Facebook for his uh, little community, um, and on that page was posted a couple cartoons about Muhammad and some other stuff about atheism. Uh, unfortunately, what happened is the local community found out that he was in charge of this. Uh, he was attacked at his workplace by an angry mob, and uh, when the police arrived to break up the violence that was, that was going on, they arrested Alexander and charged him with blasphemy, promoting atheism, and inciting religious hatred and hostility. That was back in January, and um, fast forward to June 14th. Uh, and, and he was convicted and sent two and a half years in prison and fined uh, 100 million rupiah, which is about $10,600 U.S. Um, so the situation is right now that he's in prison. Um, his lawyers are appealing the case, and the prosecutors are actually seeking a harsher sentence. Under Indonesian law, he could actually spend five years in jail. So, um, wow. so that's kind of the update on what's going on on the ground in Indonesia right now. Wow, that's that's pretty uh, oppressive. And it, Indonesia is a country that we do trade with, that we have trade agreements and international UN agreements, right? Yeah, so that's what's actually most disturbing about this, is that uh, Indonesia is clearly violating its obligations uh, to several UN and international agreements. Most importantly is uh, what's called the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Uh, it's a central UN document outlining uh, civil and political rights that all human beings should, should be afforded. And Articles 18 and 19 of that treaty uh, state firmly that every person has the right to freedom of belief and expression uh, and religion. So, so yes, they're clearly in violation of not just kind of ethical norms that, you know, a lot of secular, rational people in the West adhere to, but they're clearly in violation of, of basic UN treaties. So, um, yeah, it's outrageous, obviously, to, to have someone put in jail simply for expressing his or her opinion about religion. Yeah, and in Indonesia is a big country. I mean, I don't want to say it's as big as China, but it's it's not a small country. It's not backwater. This is a major, major country, one of the biggest in the world. What? Um, do, how do they treat Christians? Like, I, I can, you know, see this. This situation is about an atheist. Do, do they treat Christians the same? Are there Christians in Indonesia? Or is it all Muslim? No, uh, unfortunately, Christians uh, face similar sorts of similar sorts of uh, crackdowns. Um, the way that Indonesia's uh, politics works is that they, the way the constitution works is that they claim to guarantee freedom of religion. Unfortunately, while at the same time only recognizing six official religions, which is Islam, uh, Protestantism, Catholicism. Hinduism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. So if you wow. uh, are a Christian of any sort that strays from kind of normal Protestant or, or Catholic teachings, um, you're going, to, you're going to, to get violent violence from the community, and uh, you're not going to get support from the government, unfortunately. And wow. this, is, this has been well documented for, for a long time. It's not just atheists and non-believers who are, who are getting these sorts of things happening to them. It's, it's, um, it's also Christians. Yeah, like a Mormon. Like, you know, we might have a Mormon president, and uh, they wouldn't allow him in that country. <laughs> I mean, that's how it almost sounds. It's, that's insane. You could be in the country as a Mormon. You would just not have to, you'd be able to not talk about it. Yeah, um, if you mentioned it. You couldn't, you couldn't talk about it. You couldn't start a Facebook group about it. Uh, because if anyone found out about it, you could be punished um, under law. Simply, I mean, that's what's so backward about the, their their laws regarding incitement and blasphemy. I mean, this is not actually um, 
the law that protects people from actual incitement. I mean, they consider incitement simply saying that you, you don't belong to one of the six official religions of the state. That's enough to get you in jail. Yeah. So, and, and they like th this guy was a was a victim. Let's be serious. In any place that that deals with reasonableness and and logic and reason, the things that you your center fights for. This man was a victim. He was beaten by a mob, and then he was thrown in jail. It's, it's just so, so backwards. It just does not make any sense at all. It's it's really ironic that he was uh, eventually convicted under the incitement law because, it, in a way, he actually did incite violence, but the violence was aimed at him. So, um, you know, there's a obviously, you know, that, that's backwards. But um, this is the way it is, not just in Indonesia, but in a lot of countries where. Islam is the predominant religion. Uh, unfortunately, politicians and lawmakers, uh, you know, put in place laws like this to protect from dissent. I mean, they simply don't want people questioning uh, the predominant religion in their country. So it's really uh, unfortunate. But yes, this is one of the things that, that the Center for Inquiry is dedicated to uh, to overturning eventually. Does Indonesia have a, a demi tax? Do they are they forced demitude on them? I'm sorry about Does that? Indonesia have a demi tax? Demitude? What is that? Where it's um, where other other religions acquire, can exist. They're required to pay a tax in order to if they practice a religion outside of Islam. Uh, well, I, the way that I know that it works, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not completely sure if I know the answer to your question, but I know the way that it works is again they have six official religions, and as long as you adhere to one of those six, then you're okay. Uh, my understanding though is that. You know, you don't have to pay any taxes if you belong to one of those six. And if you don't belong to one of those six, you better keep your mouth closed because you don't have to worry about getting taxed. You have to worry about getting thrown in jail. Yeah. What about, uh, what can people do right now to help out this this gentleman who's in jail right now? Patrick, how can they help him? Yeah, there's, a, there's quite a bit they can do, actually. Um, and that's actually, you know, as an aside, that was one of the things that struck me about the case is that he was... 30, I think he turned 31 now that he's been in prison. Um, but, you know, he's a 30, 31 year old guy who was posting about his doubts about religion on Facebook and uh, kind of identified with me. Um, you know, there's a lot that people can do, actually. Um, one of the most important things they can do right now is uh, the Center for Inquiry has started a petition on the White House website. Uh, the White House allows you to put up petitions on the website, and as long as you get 25,000 signatures within 30 days, uh, you're guaranteed a, a formal response of some sort from the administration, from from this petition, probably someone in the State Department. Uh, so if you go to the, the website, our website, centerforinquiry.net, you'll see it right on the front page. There's a link. You can click over to the White House website and sign the petition. And again, if we get the 25,000 signatures uh, by August 16th, as we, we started the petition weeks ago, uh, we're guaranteed some sort of formal response again from the, the Obama administration. and. You know, even if the response is not necessarily what we want, at least we've brought to their attention that there are, you know, 25,000 people in the United States who care about this guy in Indonesia. Um, but aside from, aside from stuff like that, um, there's quite a, a bit you can do. You can write to Indonesian uh, politicians and lawmakers. You can write to the president of Indonesia and tell him that uh, you're concerned as an American, as someone who, you know, potentially is even considered visiting Indonesia on vacation, that, that this is something that goes against your values. Um, you can write to the Indonesian ambassador uh, who lives in, in Washington, D.C., or you can write to the consulate general who there might be one in your area and ask him or her to relay you know, your, your concerns back to uh, lawmakers and politicians in Indonesia. Um, but, you know, outside of kind of formal political stuff, there's, there's quite a bit you can do as well. You can, you know, post about Alex, Alexander on case on Twitter, uh, share news articles about it, write blog posts about it. You know, there's not been a ton uh, of media coverage uh, for this case, unfortunately. In fact, there's been very little mainstream media coverage. Most of the media coverage has been kind of alternative news. Um, so, you know, try to get the word out there, kind of letter to the editor, or just something like that. Um, but uh, there are two other things you can do. And, and, uh, you know, along with the Center for Inquiry, there are a couple other organizations doing work on this case. Uh, one of them is the Atheist Alliance International. And they're doing, I think, two very important things uh, worth mentioning. One is that they're actually raising money for his appeal. Um, and obviously, you know, we want to help him get, you know, the best chance of getting out of jail as possible. So, um, so 
So that's one thing you can do. And then the other thing you can do on their website is actually you can you can send a message to Alex and tell him that you're over here in America, but you've learned of his case and you support him. Um, we know that he's listening, actually, because he's sent out a letter to supporters, uh, at least through friends and family, basically saying that support means quite a lot to him. So, so if you click over to the Atheist Alliance International website, you can do both of those things. You can donate to his appeals fund, and you can also write write him a letter and tell him tell him that there are people halfway across the world thinking about him, thinking about him. And that website again was atheistinternational.com. Uh, it was a- Atheist Alliance International. Uh, they're just atheistalliance.org. And, Atheist uh, Alliance, and again, our website is centerforinquiries.net. Okay. Yeah, I just um, we just posted the uh, the change.org on our Facebook group. If anyone's checking in on that, there's 6,098 signatures. They, they need some more signatures for this. So I think definitely President Obama could, could do a lot on this, couldn't he? President Obama could, um, you know, especially because he has ties to Indonesia, you know, growing up. Uh, we thought that this would be a case that might strike him uh, as one to take up. At, at the same time, being completely practical about it, we realized that it's an election year and the White House is going to be very careful about uh, at least how Obama, you know, handles situations like this. But uh, one of the things that we were really aiming for is the State Department often uh, identifies people around the world that are prisoners of conscience who simply uh, are in jail for being a Christian or being an atheist and speaking out about it. And, um, you know, the governments that are oppressing these people, obviously, are, are, again, in violation of international treaties. So at the very least, we're trying to get the State Department to, to add Alex and put some diplomatic pressure uh, on Indonesia because, as you said, it's not just these international treaties, but we have all sorts of trades that we carry out with Indonesia, we, we do a lot of business with them. So, um, you know, so the U.S. does have a kind of, you know, hand here to put some pressure on the Indonesian government. So, um, so that's what we're really hoping for, the State Department to get involved. You know, we kind of realize that Obama, again, is in re-election mode. So, um, you know, he's going to be careful about the, the issues that he chooses to take on. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, w- w- what are some of the other things that... Uh, center of inquiry that you guys focus on that you're working on well this is actually uh one of the things i mean this actually ties in as one of the things that we do at the united nations and as kind of our part part of our international advocacy uh for the past half dozen years we've been at the u.n and uh, there's been a heavy push by islamic countries to get the UN to pass resolutions that give cover to laws like this, to incitement laws and to blasphemy laws. And they actually had some success between 1999 and 2010. Each year, the General Assembly of the United Nations passed resolutions that effectively gave cover to laws that would, um, to resolutions that would give cover to blasphemy laws. And Center for Inquiry has been one of the secular, you know, civil society groups there that has been opposing this and trying to coordinate opposition to these measures. And actually, fortunately, in 2011, the the defamation of religions resolutions, as they call them, uh, were dropped. And now they're pursuing some new resolutions that have much better language uh, in defense of free speech and and freedom of of religion. So that's that's one of the things that we do, at least at the UN, and it kind of fits in well uh, as an example of the kind of stuff that we're doing alongside uh, the work that we do uh, uh, with Alexander on, you know, for the past couple of months. But, um, but it really, it's wide-ranging. I mean, um, just last week we were, you know, sending out an action alert and trying to get a bunch of people to write into the representatives to get Congress to reject uh, a bill that would have banned abortion in Washington, D.C. after 20 weeks. Um, before that, we were lobbying the Department of Health and Human Services really hard to ignore the Catholic bishops, uh, regarding the whole birth control debates, um, which just went into effect August 1. Um, but, it, you know, it, it goes even beyond that. We've done work on climate change before. We've done work on um, LGBT rights. So, um, you know, it's really a wide-ranging mandate that we have because effectively what we're doing is we're trying to get public policy to better reflect, kind of like you said before, reason and logic and scientific thinking. So uh, when you think about public policy in that vein, there's quite a bit of work you can do, actually. Absolutely. And then uh, we, we definitely appreciate your time today, Michael. I know that you're, you're the UN representative, so you're up at the UN. You must see 
a lot of uh, amazing, crazy things up there that that people people are interested in because there's a lot of conspiracy theories about the UN out there. What what what's your if there's anything you can leave people from your time at the UN and, and the days that you spend up there and interacting and representing, what what is it about the UN? What what can you tell people about the UN? Yeah, the, the well, you know, there's a quote about uh, democracy, I think, which is that, or, or government rather, that it's a necessary evil. And um, sometimes I feel that way about the United Nations. Um, you know, without a doubt, uh, the United Nations, very much like American politics, because I spent a lot of time in, in D.C., uh, is home to a lot of political theater and, uh, you know, a lot of soundbite type stuff and a lot of internal wrangling that kind of happens in back rooms, without a doubt. And, and I understand that a lot of people share skepticism about, you know, how effective the U.N. can really be and how kind of, you know, honest and open the U.N. really is. But at the same time, it's, uh, it's a necessary function. It's, it's a place where representatives from around the world can come together and, and talk about, you know, what sort of global policy should be put in place. And it provides, most importantly, for people out there that are listening to this radio show, uh, if they have people like me who are going to the UN representing their, their case, um, it provides that avenue because that's, it's not something, you know, it's very hard for the average citizen to get involved, to have the amount of time to get involved in these sorts of issues. But if you have a representative actually going to the United Nations and speaking with delegates and other uh, representatives from member states, uh, you know, it gives, it gives you a voice uh, in the global community. So, so while I think that certainly there, there are problems and shortcomings of the United Nations, that it's a... Uh, necessary and, and in many ways actually valuable. Um, you know, it can, it can rally support for all sorts of different important causes and hopefully, uh, you know, one of the things that we're doing with the, the Alexander Ahn case is hopefully to rally some international support uh, in the community, international community to put some pressure on, on countries like Indonesia that are, you know, kind of trying to break out and become a, you know, a new prospering democracy and tell them that if they really want to do that, they need to respect their respect the international agreements that they've signed on to. So that's the kind of thing that we're doing, and, and I think that's a valuable, I think it's a valuable thing. I think, you know, people in America, when I tell them that I do that, they think it's great. So, uh, you know, there are ups and downs, but I think uh, for the most part, you know, it's up, and it's good. Well, thank you, Michael, for uh, being on the show today. Um, we're, we're checking out the, uh, the, <clears throat> the, the number of people who have signed that petition, and I'm already yeah. noticing that it's going up. And that uh, I know a couple people have already posted, like Nikki Smokes, she just signed it. So hopefully we get a lot more signatures. We want people to sign that petition on change.org. Uh, it's a petition of the White House. Whitehouse.gov is, is where I'm signing it right now. So definitely. Yeah, there are actually, I'm sorry to interrupt, there are two actually, there are two petitions going on. One is the Whitehouse.gov petition, and there is a change.org petition as well. The okay. change.org petition, once it reaches, I think, 1,500 signatures, it will get forwarded actually to the president of Indonesia, whereas the WhiteHouse.gov petition will get forwarded to you know the Obama administration. The right. White House. So, so, so we'll, uh, equally important petitions. So we'll post them both and and promote them both. Uh, that's good. Uh, I'm glad you noted that there are two of them. So we'll we'll get all that info out. I'm glad to see that people are already signing it because there's no way that someone should be in jail over a Facebook post that doesn't threaten anybody. I mean, come on, the guy was questioning his faith started a little group of like-minded people. This is what all people should be able to do anywhere in this world. This is outrageous, and uh, we need to get this gentleman, Alexander Ahn. Did I say his name right? Ahn? Alexander Ahn. There's actually a, a, kind of second, yeah, there's a second intonation there. Yeah. Well, you need to free this man. This is uh, not right. So let's uh, spread the word. Po repost this, these two petitions everywhere on your Facebook pages. I know people are listening. And uh, Michael... Thank you so much for taking time today and, and, and getting the word out on this. Well, thank you for having me. It was really a pleasure talking to you today. All right. We'll talk to you soon. If, if you have anything else like this in the future, definitely you need to get the word out. You know who to call. Call us. We'd love to have you back on the show. Great. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Again, this was, this was wonderful. Appreciate it. Thank you, Michael. You're listening to Two Hotheads Where Activism Happens. And uh, what, what time is it? Just about that time. Yeah, it's about that time to head out, uh, come back next week and do it again. Um, 
Anything you want to leave us with this week, Garrett? You know, I'm, I was thinking about just starting a petition, um, you know, go to the whitehouse.gov and change.org, my own petition, um, and I say we just invade Indonesia and let this guy, let this guy out. We're invading everybody else. So. Oh, yeah, why don't we invade them? Why not? <laughs> uh, do they have oil? They must do- have some oil. I don't know. They have something. They got to have something we want. It's a good. Yeah. It's a fairly good trading choke point. So that should be good enough. Yeah. For I mean, that, that's the thing. Indonesia, like China, is one of these countries that does a lot of trade. So, um, you know, they they get to do what they want because they make money. Is that how it works? I guess it is, huh? Hey, as long as you play ball, you're all right. Their government, their evil government, that does this to people. England locked somebody up for a Twitter comment this week. It, England did? Yeah, one of the swimmers. Some kid said, uh, so one of the did, uh, Tom Daly said he was just he was trying to win it for his dad, who is dead. And one of the kids said, uh, your dad is disappointed in you. And they put him and in they jail. They arrested him. Yeah, for making That's malicious crazy. comments. Some of the a lot of these laws are based on some of what uh, what Michael's just talking about about you know. Islam is pushing forth political correctness laws. That's crazy. Now we're bringing them to the West. Yeah. I mean, YouTube, like, I understand because I get the hate on, you know, videos and YouTube comments, but it's, come on. You know what I mean? Like, come on. People need to grow a thicker skin or something or just comment back. I love, I love watch Kokesh. Kokesh rips him apart. I, I respond to people when they say stupid shit. Just, you gotta. just make them feel like a fool and g- g- move on. You, you know, to. or ignore it. Like, just putting people in jail over that. That's crazy. England is crazy. England, I don't even understand this. I don't even know why, but Michael Savage is banned from going to England. That, that, that to me is insane. Why is he banned? I don't, I don't even understand that. Cause he told, probably because he told a guy he hopes he gets AIDS and, die, and so dies what? on live television. Did, no, is he that should, what he said? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's why he was fired from MSNBC. It was hilarious. Well, I think he was fired for more than that. That guy is. Uh, it doesn't take more than that to fight you. Uh, I don't know. You know, I think there's a <coughs> a poli- poli- uh, political agenda with NBC and a lot of these corporations that they don't want anyone outside of their little. Well, they wouldn't their, hired Michael Savage to begin with. That well, well that's case. what makes you wonder. Sometimes they silence people. Sometimes they'll, you, you know, there's this old thing of the corporations that uh, happens all the time, and you can ask Fifty Cent about this, where. Uh, a lot of the rap guys, they do this. They'll buy the, the, the next hot up-and-coming rapper. They'll put him on their label because they don't want to put him out. You know, they, they want to shut him down, so you buy him. You buy, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. buy their silence. You offer them the contract. You know, if you have 50 Cent and you're worried about competition, you buy your competition out. And then even when you put out this stuff, you don't promote it as much as your own stuff. Right. I mean, that's what you hear, like, what, you know, a lot of these rappers get upset about. And... uh I think the corporations do that all the time. They want to co-op people. They figure if they get them under a contract, then they can sit down with them with the suits and, and talk them into doing stuff they don't want to do. Oh, so they, they did that to Jesse Ventura. I mean, yeah. he had a contract with um, whatever company it was, you know, and they, they essentially just gave him this contract, had him sign on, just so he they he wouldn't go out and speak because he couldn't speak to anybody else, you know, outside of the contract. Exactly. So, so he years, sat out for like two or three years. And and look at Dave Chappelle walking away for fifty million bucks. He wasn't crazy. He walked away for a reason because he didn't. He didn't want that money because of what he would have had to do for it. So uh, we, that's not what we do here at Unregular. We do whatever we want. Six one seven six zero six four one two two. We're over our time. Max Bowen's coming up. The live music show. Love this show. Love this station. We'll be back next week, same time. Two hotheads where activism happens. Thank you.